So one of the things that, that became really interesting to us as we were growing leading agile over the last eight years is why some coaches we hired were very effective in influencing organizations and why some of the coaches were really struggling in the organization. And the conversations we were having, it became really, really clear that um, understanding the problem, having cleared in how to do agile and trying to teach agile on people um, wasn't the right answer. And these conflicts became really, really evident in the organization that they were dealing with because managers would be frustrated with the coaches, the coaches would be frustrated with the managers. Executives wouldn't be getting the results they wanted and the managers were complaining about how the coaches were frustrating them. Over time, we came up with this concept of an influence trust loop. So one of the things um, when we're walking in or when you're looking at your coaching engagements, if you're interested in, you're having any of these types of struggles, you have um, uh, people that are looking at feeling good about it, but you're not getting the results, or you're getting results, but there's conflict in your organization, try to use this diagnostic to look at the interactions at different levels of the organization. And where I want to start with the influence trust loop is on the influence side. Because um, it's a loop you can start anywhere. It becomes a self-reinforcing loop, like a virtuous cycle, but it can also become a vicious cycle if you miss any of the steps. Um, from an influence loop, the first step is getting access, actually getting in the room to talk to somebody about what their problem is and um, that they have a need that they're willing to express. You've got to get in the room and, and have access with the right type of people. Um, the next step on the influence loop is is having empathy for that person's problems. What are the things that that person faces every day? What's gonna get them fired? What's gonna get them um, pressure from their boss or threaten their livelihood or their ability to keep their kids in their private school or whatever's going on? Like what is really underneath their stuff and their job that they're challenged with? And you have to understand it. And then it's about having a point of view. The point of view is interesting because the point of view is about being able to take what we know works our point of view, but framing it so that the person who's we're talking with understands it from their point of view. So it's about aligning point of views, but it's not order taking. It's not going in and just doing whatever they ask us to. It's going in and helping them understand how to solve their problem they have with the work that we know how to do, that we're good at, that we know works. Um, but doing it from their, so it, so it meets with their empathy, connecting those two things together. And then there's a final step, which is really important and it's about creating safety for them. It's not just about explaining how the world could be a better place, but how are you gonna get there? And we have a model that we're pretty intentional about that creates safety and maintains safety throughout the engagement. Um, once you've gotten access, empathy, point of view, and safety to go solve a problem, you've influenced them and they've asked you to come solve a particular class of problem, you get specific agency to go make those changes with them or in their organization. This is permission to go make change. Now we're starting to build on the trust loop. Integrity is a really interesting one. Integrity means that we're delivering to the point of view that we said we would, demonstrating the empathy that we started the conversation with, and sticking with the approach that we said would create safety for them. We're actually doing what we said we would do, calling our shots and delivering it. Um, from integrity comes competence. At the end of the day, you show up, you get in the room, you do some work, you have to do it well. Um, you have to show up and be credible in front of the room. You have to um, just deliver excellently. And you have to be able to demonstrate measurable results. So one of the things that safety is, from safety, we're going to tell them how they're going to be able to measure the results at the end. And we have to be able to actually demonstrate those results. So that's the influence trust cycle. Those results, obviously, give you then access to either increase your sphere of influence in the organization, move up in the organization, get inferred influence another part of the organization. So this gives you the ability to solve bigger and bigger problems for that organization over time. Um, <clears throat> and if you're getting the high empathy, high safety, no results, no competence sort of, of, um, of impact that's going on, it becomes really, really clear about what does that point of view need to be? How do you go negotiate and define a plan that incorporates results and competence? Because between organizations and coaches and approaches, People just will end up in that place if you're not deliberately paying attention to it. If, you, if you're running into the point where you've got people that are really smart, working really hard, showing their work, sort of fighting with their results and competence and their strong point of view, you want to work with them to compensate for creating empathy and safety and getting agency um, and being able to operate, showing that empathy and safety 
for, to be able to unleash that competence of the organization. Because the organization will either reject the first one early or the second one late. And it isn't a problem with Agile. It isn't a problem with, um, with the work that we're trying to do. It's a problem with the way that we're engaging and change in the organization. You've got to address the entire loop and you've got to be very intentional about making sure that you're addressing all eight aspects of this. The first failure mode, really, really common is we have an incredibly competent coach. They know where they're going, what to do, have answers to every question, believe they do, and they have a really, really strong point of view about how to get there. Um, and they're operating from, I'm doing all the right things, I know where you need to get to. Those coaches often bounce off of organizations really, really fast. It causes all kinds of challenges in um, getting the organization to change and being able to defend the work that you're doing, despite the fact that you're being very competent. So that's a failure mode that, that we see all the time. The other one is when you have a lack of empathy and safety, or where you're, where you're operating with empathy and safety, but you're failing to actually deliver results. Um, and we see a lot of this where there's mindset driven coaching and we're trying to get people to trust each other and we're trying to get the cultural aspects of, of Agile and organization, but we're not <clears throat> um, driving results. And so what happens in these cases, when it breaks down, I've got the point of view and competence that I'm not creating any empathy or safety, so I can't operate with integrity to the whole model. The model begins to break down. It becomes a vicious cycle instead of a virtuous cycle. It's real easy to look at that and identify that problem. What you do for that competent, strong point of view coach is you help position them, put them in a box of empathy and safety. You get agency from the people that you're changing to go operate within that box and let those coaches run. When you have coaches that are great at creating empathy and safety, but they're sort of order taking, back of the room, um, not operating from a point of view, not generating results, what we need to do for them is we need to create a very, very clear path for them. Be almost a script that they can operate within and then remind them to operate to the script all the time. Because if you don't do that, the loop breaks down, it becomes a vicious cycle instead of a virtuous cycle.